from space age to super bikes. Five Dev may be new to the bicycle component industry, but they are certainly not new to CNC machining quality parts. They were putting parts on Mars way before they were putting parts on bikes. This is their story. Chris and Steve met 20 years ago in a bike shop, which isn't an unusual story for a bike brand, but as engineers by trade, they started Fifth Axis First, a company that would go on to be a world leader in precision engineering, working with the likes of NASA, SpaceX, and the US military. Now starting 5Dev, they bring a wealth of knowledge to this industry, as well as a bunch of machines that would usually be unobtainable for a startup company like this. Thanks to 5Dev, they've brought us here to California to find out what they do and how they do it. I'm Steve Grangetto, co-CEO of 5Dev. Hi, I'm Chris Taylor, co-founder of Fifth Axis, and our latest venture is 5Dev. 5Dev um, is an abbreviation for Fifth Axis Development, and that's our um, bicycle components division. So Steve and I had met actually um, mountain biking. A good friend, mutual friend of ours, was the general manager at the Cantina Bike Shop. I was actually there getting a new pair of cranks put on my bike, and uh, he was there hanging out, and we just got to talking. And I'm a mechanical engineer, and he was studying mechanical engineering still, and uh, was really excited to hear some of the stuff that I was doing with uh, design and 3D solid modeling, and. Uh, yeah, we just hit it off, and uh, next thing you know, we were friends. <laughs> so Steve and I had worked together at Cubic Defense and um, got tired of big corporate politics. We were talking about, you know, doing a small prototype shop and doing some engineering work, um, and we wanted to get a couple of machines uh, for the garage. So we bought a five-axis machine, and then um, after we had purchased it, realized it wouldn't fit in the garage. And so then quickly had to lease uh, industrial space. And that was kind of the start of fifth axis. A lot of typical machines are three axis, which you got your X, Y, Z. When you add two more axes to it. The five axis machinery allows you to rotate a part to any position or angle and also cut while the machine is rotating, simultaneous five axis cuts. So fifth axis started as a job shop. We did contract work for um, military, high tech, medical, communication, semiconductor, you know, kind of gamut of um, high tech manufacturing companies. When we got into five axis machining, we found out that there was not a lot of work holding or fixturing for the machinery, so. We always wanted to do our own thing. We're both creative and, you know, very capable of um, designing and engineering and inventing our own stuff. And so once we were large enough and had enough budget to support that, we began developing our own products that started with tooling, so our vices, our rock lock quick change system and um, tooling systems are used worldwide. Some of the more interesting projects that we've done, uh, we built the little titanium scooper um, that is used on Mars Science Lab that scoops up soil samples and is literally right now driving around on Mars. We were doing work for cubic defense, uh, making some of those uh, multi-integrated laser engagement system parts for them, for the MILES program. We've also built parts for quite a few of the uh, newer space companies, SpaceX and Blue Origin and um, we do some interesting medical components. I've always tinkered with the idea of doing 
bicycle components. I've got um, my engineering notebook has pages and pages of different ideas and, you know, hubs and spokes and stems and like pretty much every part on a bicycle I've like looked at at one point and thought like oh I could do it different or better and I'll go make some sketches and think about it and then put the notebook away and um, I think COVID really was kind of the tipping point it, it was a combination of, of you know the company being big enough and having enough resources that we could afford to um, have a team of people working on something that wasn't going to make any money for quite some time, you know, more than a year, could be two years before it actually kind of breaks even. And so being, you know, in a financial position that you could really afford to do that. And then also um, COVID really highlighted a lot of problems with supply chain. You know, we said, wow, if, if we were doing components we could react more quickly, we could run smaller batches, we could do some neat things that like a lot of the other companies aren't capable of doing. Do you, having our own manufacturing, it makes us easy for us to do changes on the fly and you know, prototype our products a lot faster. I think that's one thing I've always enjoyed about being part of the manufacturing and the engineering side of any job that I've had, um, is just the ability to prototype quickly and see what works and what doesn't work in the real world. The tie cranks, working on that project was really fun because we encouraged and let the engineers and also the programmers who work very closely, you know, back and forth, um, the programmers are allowed to like modify and change the designs and push them back to engineering. And then engineering will rerun the finite element analysis and confirm that the programmers changes haven't um, compromised, you know, strength or weight. Seeing the excitement, our, our lead programmer was working on, you know, Saturday and just like, just cause he was so excited about the part. It's like a piece of art to them. I think, and when I look at them, I could kind of pair, compare them to like, you know, aircraft parts where you have gusseting and thin wall sections and, you know, more of uh, an aerospace look to it. Also, it's not all about looks. There's a lot of functional details. So, you know, the um, length of our crank is cut super tight so, you, so the crank arm isn't hitting rocks. Where we ride, it's very rocky. And so you'll see our pedals are extremely thin and the crank arms are super tight around the, around the end. And, you know, uh, they'll tend a little bit shorter in, in our neck of the woods because it's so rocky and everybody hates kicking rocks. Hopefully all that, you know, excitement and passion and hard work shows through in the finished product because uh, there's a lot of pride in our team that, you know, went into that. My name is Nico Malali, and I'm a professional downhill racer. The Frameworks project is my idea to build a custom downhill frame suited for me as a pro rider with my experience racing for various teams over my career to create a bike that was exactly what I wanted and take it to the World Cup, compete on it, and try to develop it through the process of racing. Nico is similar to a lot of our customers where he um, understands how his product works, and, um, but he's definitely not an expert at manufacturing. And so we kind of, you know, our team is really good at kind of bridging that gap. Well, part of creating the Frameworks program, I was able to choose my own sponsors. To get support to be able to go race, you need funding and the product support from component sponsors. And 5Dev was my first choice for cranks when they first launched their crank two years ago. Um, I just actually reached out to them on social media. I saw that they posted a picture of the crank and I, 
I think I wrote in the comments, do you make this in the downhill spindle size? And Will quickly wrote back to me and said, hey, give me a call. It started out as they were supplying me with cranks to race with. And then as I learned more about the company, from where I was sitting, that was really cool opportunity to ask for some favors um, as I was building my custom frames. When Nico says like, hey, I need these features because I want the frame to do this or like, you know, he's got his reasons why he wants things done a certain way. Our guys, you know, pay attention to that and then take his input and then take their specialty of turning his idea into a part that is um, manufacturable. So on our first frames, we were using an aluminum rear triangle and they made the main pivot yoke, which attaches the chain stay to a mainframe. And the first ones that I had designed were two pieces and they were welded together. That's a common way of doing a, a yoke like that because the smaller the pieces are, the more efficient they are to manufacture. But with the capabilities of 5Dev, they could make that piece out of just one solid yoke and it wouldn't be distorted under welding or heat treat. Everything was perfectly aligned and that solved a couple issues that we were having in the very first prototypes with alignment and getting everything straight. So their capabilities came in and, and made the frames a lot straighter. On this bike and all my bikes, they've made the rocker links, which the rocker link isn't a welded piece on the frame. It's a piece that just bolts on so they can make it out of 7075, which is a higher quality alloy and they can make them super precise, make it as strong as possible while being as light as possible. If I wanna change my design at all, they can quickly give me a new link with a different geometry to change the suspension feel. One thing I learned through watching the fabrication process is that the more complexity that can be taken out of a human's hands, the more precise the frames can be and the easier they are to build and if they're easier to build, they're easier to make perfect. So we're putting a lot of complexity into the CNC parts. And instead of a bottom bracket, a main pivot, a shock mount, all being welded together, we're gonna make that out of one piece and then it can receive a straight down tube, a straight seat tube, and it's much easier to fabricate. So in the future, we've talked about a lot of different components that as a rider, I see a, a need for. Um, I train for downhill racing and ride most days of the week. So as I'm out on the trail, there's always cool ideas for little things to improve the bike. Um, and we've talked about a lot of things from brakes to um, even suspension pieces. And some of them are, you know, big dreams a long way out. But with these guys and the resources they have, I think the sky's the limit. I just hope that we can uh you know, make 5Dev really a fixture in the mountain biking industry. We're definitely working on some interesting parts. Um, you will definitely be seeing some uh, new stuff from us over the next year. The stuff we're working on is going to be true to our skill set and our capabilities. And so I'll sort of leave it to your imagination what those parts might be. They definitely fit on a bicycle and definitely fit our core competency engineering and machining wise. It'd be really cool, I think, someday to come up with some innovative idea that maybe changed the whole scope of mountain biking. But what that is, I don't know yet. <laughs> It's one thing to see a product like the 5Dev tie cranks and appreciate the form and the construction and the smooth finish that their machines afford, but it's another thing to really delve back into the history of how all of this came to be. And one thing is clear, Steve and Chris are passionate mountain bikers and having someone like Nico Malali creatively coming up with ideas for the cycling industry together is really exciting. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think about 5Dev and their components?